Hey everyone, my name is Simsi. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more AFL 23 here today on the channel. We're back with another episode of Season 2 of my Brisbane Lions career series. Here today we have a match against the Gold Coast Suns. This is episode 10. So if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Alright, three games left of the season and it is still mathematically possible to make the top eight if we continue to pick up wins. So... Let's have a look at the team. That's it. And let's get stuck into the Suns. Now, if you haven't gone and seen <laughs> the last episode, I highly recommend you do. I think it was probably the best AFL game I have played. We managed to get a After the Siren winner with Joe Danaher. And we what, what, we, what was the scoreline? 57? Um, 51. We somehow have kept our finals hopes alive. But here today, we're going to get stuck into the Suns. Q Clash is here. And Rayner is going to try and get us started. He bombs it to the top of the goal square. Back with the flight of the ball. Ben King wins it. Plays on, shoots and scores. And things are looking red hot into this match. Hipwood goes up with it. Obviously playing a lot more with Jack Gunston out with Cindus Moses. He's been out for a fair few weeks now. Dunkley comes up to help. Danaher wins it, scoring the winner last week. Now... Hits the scoreboard, scoring the Lions second here today. First quarter still, Ainsworth comes up with the punch. Gold Coast have a lot of high quality goal kickers and maybe some potential players that we could look to pick up next year. I actually don't mind Chole as a footballer, uh, Anderson, Lacocious. I do think that took Miller's probably a little bit too old, but I would probably look to bring him if he was younger. First quarter, Danaher looking for his second, goes up the other end and hits it. And the AI at the moment is pretty well balanced, if I do say. Like that Essendon match is definitely a good example of it. They do tend to handball and spray out to the wings now quite a bit. Unfortunately, Gardner just completely mistimed the mark there. And Chol now has a opportunity to bring it back within a one goal game quarter time the siren is going to go and things are super super close here today in this Q clash McInerney back in the ruck he goes up Gold Coast win the midfield duel big tackle involved not 15 play on. The big O drills it. Trying to find a target. Ultimately gets spilled. Only as far as Charlie Cameron, who drills it between the big sticks. It's a two-goal game here. And it looks like it's going to be as close as the Essendon match. Second quarter. Gold Coast trying to bring it out from the back. Falls to Zach Bailey. Who nearly ultimately kicks it out on the full. And they look to bring it out again. McPherson off. Neil comes up. Why did it say Neil then switch to Rayner? I guess it's Rayner. Well, we'll let Rayner have a set shot from this. He drilled one here last week. So we'll let him go again. And it sails through. The Lions, three goals in front in this second term. Ben King goes up, falls to Cameron, who unselfishly handballs it to Hipwood. Uh, under pressure, probably shouldn't have ultimately. And McInerney's going to get a running wind-up. Neil to Hipwood. He gets it, and it's a four-goal game lead here. 38-12. Hipwood 
has really stepped up playing that Jack Gunston role. Our midfield is so stacked bringing in King. Um, we're lucky that we have Hipwood available. It's a shame though Jack got a six-week injury. Ben King tries to turn. He gets his shot spoiled and it's going to be a ball up in our forward 50. McInerney goes up, taps it down to Neil, who handballs it out to Rayner, who's looked clinical in front of goal in this match. And it's a captain's handball. Third quarter. Gold Coast trying to get it out. Leicester. Simpkin now. He gets dropped. Somehow breaks the tackle. Bombs it just to the left of the top of the goal square. And it gets pushed over the line. 7-3-45. The Lions lead by five goals. Gold Coast, chipping it around the back. That's not 15. Boys trying to go up. Leicester gets dropped. I wonder as well, just sort of analysing our form this year, like where we where would we have been if we didn't have Will Ashcroft like out for the entire season? Like, <laughs> you kind of forget to calculate that into our bad form. But yeah, he did his Achilles at the start of the year. So we haven't seen Will Ashcroft play once in Season 2 of this Brisbane Lions career series. Like, Jai Simpkin has done well playing his role, but we could have used a little bit more first-team quality players on the bench. Ball in, though. Bailey turns and hits it. And the Lions are running away with this one as Zach Bainley threads the needle. And it's a seven-goal lead here at the Gabba. Simkin dominating the midfield. Disposes the footy well. Bombs it to Ben King. And Zach Bailey wins it. An underrated marker of the footy. But that's what we want sometimes. The tallest forward in our forward line, Ben King, doesn't necessarily have to mark the ball. Ben King can sometimes drag players out and allow others to go up to the flight of the footy. Unfortunately, Andrews there completely mistimed the interception, and it's going to be Chole to put his name on the score sheet. In this third term, it's going to be somewhat of a confidence booster for the Gold Coast Suns, but hopefully, from my perspective, it's going to be a little bit too late for them. Seven goal lead, Rayner in this fourth term. The ball goes to ground. Berry picks it up, McCluggage now. Neil from the 45 takes a bounce, and the defense is beaten, well, not really threatened, as Neil fires it over the top of it. And it's an unforgettable goal by Neil. Sensational scenes here at the Gabba. Couple good handballs. The Suns, when they do go forward, they look good. And Chole, once again, a beautiful mark. We can't seem to stop him. I'm sure the Suns will be thinking, hey, if we could just get our other forward options to activate, Chole would be in a better spot. Chol sails it through, and the crowd roars for his third or fourth. Fourth quarter with 13 seconds remaining. Seven goals up. Neil looking to claim another. Handballs it to Charlie because I thought he was getting closed down and drills it. 77 points. The Lions sit at the top of this match. And it's another six points. With Charlie Cameron... Going bang, mountain mama, <laughs> rains out in the gamma. I do quite like that touch. They do have a lot of novelty things at the gamma, giving out flowers for Mother's Day, uh, various Anzac stuff, playing a song after every goal. Um, I wish they kind of did that at other clubs, but <laughs> I guess the Lions have sort of patented it. I think it'd be called cool the MCG. I don't know. McCluggage with 10 disposals. Danaher with 3. Chole with 3.
As we go to now facing North Melbourne, and guess what? We've somehow snuck into the top eight, but we need to beat North Melbourne here today, who currently sit in 14th under Alexa Clarkson. Richmond are now top of the ladder. Port Adelaide, followed by the D's, St. Kilda, GWS. So we are in, but there are still so many teams in and around the same amount of points as us. So we can't lose this match. So uh, thankfully, Jack Gunston's now back from his six-week stint. Hipwood, Hipwood has been good, but I would still choose Jack Gunston uh, when available. But uh, here we go. Second last match of the season. This time around, we're going to be hosting the Roos at the Gabba. Jai Simpkin, captain, is going to be facing his former side at the Gabba. Let's go. Couple good handballs. Rayner. Oh, I tried to actually hit Simpkin there. McCluggage. Can't find a target, unfortunately. The Ruse. Trying to get it out from the back. Charlie Cameron with the interception. Finds Bailey. And he hits the scoreboard. I could have gone with Charlie, but I ultimately allowed Bailey to do it. And then, believe it or not, we've actually got the Bombers again. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it's a point. I was going to say, if that's a goal, that was ridiculous. I do find it's uh, a little bit unfair. It's not really holding competition integrity, allowing us to play the Bombers, what, twice in four weeks? <laughs> but seeing that we only barely won against them, um, I think it's probably a disadvantage to us ultimately. We nearly lost. But Simpkin, unapologetically, scores against his former side. First quarter still. Lions lead by two goals, 2-1-13. Andrew's trying to bring it out from the back. Unfortunately, gets pinged for holding the ball. And the Roos have an opportunity now to score their first goal of this affair. They go back and slot it. And it's still a goal game here. Six points only separating these two sides. We can't afford to lose. We need a win here today. I think a draw would probably be okay. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if it will come to the final game for us to claim top eight. I don't even know if we were to win this match and lose, would we be mathematically okay? But seeing how crazy and up and down and topsy-turvy this season has been... I think coming back as much as we can is a, a good sign. But uh, it's kind of funny that we can win f season one and win the minor premiership and then just basically, if it kept on going um, the first half of the season, like it was going into the second half, uh, we probably would have finished rock bottom, which uh, would have been crazy for this career series. Ups and downs, but I'm still trying to win as... Many premierships with the Brisbane Lions as we can. And I want to be doing multiple series of this career series because Brisbane is my team. And I'm still having a lot of fun. And there's obviously still many more teams to play. But I guess technically, if we somehow make finals this season, the challenge of winning three premierships in three years consecutively is still on. I do really like that achievement from AFL Evo. Um, I did it with the Brisbane Lions uh, last time around. It's actually on YouTube, that video, where I won three premierships back-to-back -back with Brisbane. But it's a really, really hard achievement to do. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily with Brisbane. It's with, it, with um, any team. But, uh, I'd recommend trying to do it. I, I, I don't think now that the AI is competitive as it is. It's probably possible on the hardest difficulty, that is. It's definitely easy. It's definitely um, doable on easy. So, coming into this second term, 
We're three goals up. Bailey now makes it five. And the Roos have been a little bit weird in this fixture. The Bombers looked incredibly strong. Um, just that maps match before as well. The Suns looked good with Chol, but even though they've got like Larky, um, Zerhar in that forward line, thankfully we haven't seen much of them or their finishing and scoring ability. Danaher drops it, nearly shrugs it, keeps on going though. Don't know necessarily how accurate that handball was, but he hits the dribbler there in the third, and the Lions look like they could be putting on a classic win here at the Gabba. It's a five-goal game going into this third term. McCluggage can't win the intercept. A free kangaroo has been found. And I don't know what's happening there, but it's a bug. They're going to fire it in. Coleman's there. He wins it. A couple good handballs out. And the ruse hit the scoreboard for only the second time this night. But that will give them a huge morale boost going into this third term. The Ruse trying to bring it out from the back. Terrible chip attempt. It does actually go to ground. And Bailey picks it up and gets dropped. It's a ball up in the Lions forward 50. McInerney wins it to Dunkley. He turns and gets the first shot blocked. Somehow slips the tackle and then puts his name on the score sheet for the first time in this match. I do believe he hit that point, though. He was the one that, like, torped it from the 60, but couldn't get it in. And Josh Dunkley looks good, trying to find Jack Gunston. It gets spilt only as far as Rayner, who puts it between the big sticks. And it's a six-point game here. Sorry, six-goal game here. It's well over six points. 51-15. And Dunkley wins it again, bombs it out. Ben King can't win it. It gets spoiled to him. He pivots and turns. And now it is a seven-goal game here at the Gabba. And we're laying. We are mounting on the goals. Josh Dunkley with a really good backwards hand pass. Unfortunately, we didn't capitalize on it. And Barry got dropped and got called for holding the ball. Leicester with a really brave mark with the... Back of the flight of the ball, and Leicester's going to go up here now. 30 years of age. Um, I was a little bit unsure about Leicester because I knew he'd probably be retiring soon anyway. Um, so I wasn't very hawkish on him in that first season. Like, he played in the second half a lot. But as it got towards, um, yeah, the latter stages of that season, we played him a lot more. 86, 85 rated. This is probably his last season, so we might look to move him on. But uh, now the Lions push it to an eight-goal lead, 63-16, and look certain to win this match. I don't think I've ever conceded eight in a fourth term. Back in the midfield, 10-3-63 to the Ruse, 3-4-22. Coleman defends it, and the Ruse chip it around. Good ball up. It falls, and it's quite a fortunate goal we've gifted uh, gifted them them as uh, Hugh Greenwood comes on Darcy Tucker off Zerha with a goal in this game the Roos are going to have a little bit of resurgence here with an opportunity to score their fifth but it is still a five goal game and the clock is ultimately going to beat the Roos here there's no way that they can come back in this match and we keep our finals hopes alive as Darcy Tucker comes back on. 17 seconds remaining. We have a ball up in the midfield. Neil wins it, handballs it to Simpkin, who winds up outside the 50 and probably scores the best looking goal of this match against his former side. That is number two, and it's great to see him celebrating as well unapologetically. He's a lion through and through. And the Lions have mauled the Ruse here at the Gabba. They might get one more back here, but it's not going to matter. 
as it's a five goal victory 70 40 for the Lions win over North Melbourne and we're going to sing the song and win so unfortunately on that note it is time to end the video here with Josh Dunkley being the major ball winner uh, Shields with two Zerha with just the one and now we somehow go to fourth <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. I feel like some of the other teams have fallen off slightly, but I still think we can mathematically not qualify. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but stay tuned for Season 2, Episode 11 of this Brisbane Lion Coach Career Series coming out the exact same time tomorrow. Thanks, guys, for all the support on the channel. Really do appreciate it, and uh, all the new subs as well. But anyway... Uh, if you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.